All right, good morning guys. Today's job, we need to get the transition strip put in between the uh, kitchen and the den area here in the back of the house. We need to do something cool. I don't want to just take a strip of, uh, you know, a wooden transition strip and lay it in there. It's really not in keeping with the uh, ultra, mo ultra modern sort of look of the house, okay? So let's pull her in close and I'll give you a look. Yeah, I got my uh, wild work clothes on today. Right down to my uh, beautiful shoes. But here's where we're talking about the transition between the uh, kitchen and the den area. And generally it's about four and a half inches wide here. And it's about 44 and a half inches long. So what we need to do, we need to clean up this uh, box in here and uh, make sure she's uh, square down the sides. We need to put down some new, uh, some new backer paper down here, some of the moisture barrier paper, and we got plenty of that. We want to cut that in. We want to put a piece of exterior plywood in here. Then we want to put our retaining, uh, retaining walls, our metal retaining strips on the side. Then lay our, uh, our tile in there and it's going to give us a real good effect, okay? But the first thing we need to do, uh, you know, and most people might use a wooden transition strip or something like that. I don't, I want something fancier in here. So the first thing we want to do is save these, remove these two wooden uh, strips from the flooring here, uh, the hardwood flooring, and we want to try to get them up carefully because we want to save these because these could be useful if we have another part of the floor that ever gets damaged, we have some original uh, wood to put in there. So, all right, that's the uh, that's the job that we have to do uh, today. So let's get cracking on it and uh, stick with the rosy girl. Okay, guys, we got the first uh, two pieces out without uh, incident, and they're going to be uh, uh, good items to keep safe in the uh, garage there for replacement. But you can see now we have a pretty uniform size uh, rectangle here, about four and a half inches by 44. So what we want to do now, this is actually grout that came down into the uh, into the side here, down the box. So we want to clean it up so it's nice and square and clean like that on both sides. Then we can lay in our uh, our uh, vapor barrier here, and then we can put down our uh, Exterior grade plywood, which will take the mastic well, and we'll have our uh, channel channel pieces here, which is a nice uh, finish detail. Okay, so let's get her cleaned up. Okay, well you can see now we got her cleaned out real good in the box, and we got her very uniform. What we want to do now is uh, we want to be very careful, but but on this edge down here. We want to make sure that uh, she's cleaned up and 90 degrees to the floor or else our channel won't sit properly there. And we need to be very careful when using the uh, cold chisel there because these porcelain tiles are brittle. And what we don't want to do is crack a porcelain tile today for sure. Okay, so we want to be very careful about cleaning and squaring that uh, channel up. And then we'll lay in our uh, moisture barrier and get our plywood down. Okay, boys, let's get a uh, progress update here. We got her cleaned out good. Uh, yeah, we got her squared up the edge where the tile is, that being the critical edge out there. So we're straight down. We don't have much of a gap. We don't want it straight up. We want the floor to uh, expand and contract without causing any problems. Uh, the deal was also that the uh, tile back here was a quarter inch higher than the uh, floor in the uh, den area here. In other words, the uh, kitchen floor is a quarter inch, uh, if you were to look at it on the side, quarter inch higher. So what I usually do when I have these situations is use uh, tapered wedges along here like shims and things like that and I lay the shims in this way and that uh, rise allows the back edge to rise up here and uh, still gives it plenty of uh, plenty of support beneath it for the uh, for the uh, tile to be on and uh, I've always had great success with that and it keeps it very very stable okay 
some people like to lay a plywood strip in the back, but that still allows for some that still allows for some bending in the middle and over time that tile will work loose. We have our exterior plywood down there and all we're doing now is fitting in our band here which is a nice finished detail and it matches the tile nicely on that side and we'll fit the other one in and we'll be able to uh, get our mastic down and get our uh, tile set today. Okay? Okay guys, we rough fit the uh, tile in there uh, just to check her and uh, check her good. And I think you'll agree that gives a really beautiful finished detail and transition between the two rooms sticking with the uh, earthen tones over here and these glass mosaics. Now the important things are, sure it looks great and everything, but it has no trip hazard on this side now and the transition slopes nicely down to the other side where there's no uh, slip uh, or trip potential there either so okay all that remains to do now is we'll get the uh, mastic out we'll get these tiles set and we'll get on with our day alright thanks guys Alright guys, we started about 9 o'clock and it's now uh, 10.45. I guess the old saying, if you know what you're doing, you know, you get her done quick. Otherwise, you mess around with it all day. I've got the uh, mastic down. i got the uh, tile adhesive down. And she's setting in a good bed of that. Don't lay that stuff on thick when you're doing a uh, tile setting. It's an adhesive. It's not a, uh, you know, it's not a grout. It's not a mortar, okay? It's called thin set. You put a nice coat on the metal sides underneath of the uh, trim. Trim pieces are going to hold that stuff like uh, cement in there. and It's going to be hard as a rock. Don't, uh, don't wiggle the towel. Don't press it down. Just set it good. Leave it alone. Make sure if you have any... Uh, mastic that may be popping up between tiles just clean it out a little bit you want to have room for your uh, you want to have room for the grout to take in there and that's a key thing a lot of people I've seen they'll uh, they'll do uh, the mastic and they'll lay it on so thick when it comes time to do the uh, grouting there's no space for the grout to go between the tiles because they've laid that uh, mastic on so thick and then they got a real problem Okay, then you either got to just switch up and fake it with a uh, matching mastic collar or you're screwed. You got to take up the whole deal. So there's the, uh, there's the program, guys. I, uh, I think it's darn good. This is, I, didn't, I don't like the fast drying. I'm not on a job site here, so I don't go for the fast drying uh, polymers. I like the slow set stuff. I believe it sets up better and it uh, gives more durability. And we're going to clean up for the day, and we're going to stay off of this. And probably, um, probably Sunday, we'll wake up in the morning and grout her up. I want that to set real good. That's a heavy wear strip there, but I think it, I think it looks uh, stunning between the uh, kitchen and the um, floor in the uh, den area here. And what I'll do is probably paint this wall the green like the kitchen because I think it uh, goes a little better looking with the uh, towel but uh, that's how you create a uh, towel custom towel transition between rooms my cost was about uh, for 28 28 dollars for the uh, glass mosaic towel about 14 dollars for the strip material and the rest is the uh, mastics and things, another $10. So not a bad deal. Comes in under $60. And, uh, you know, in terms of uh, wood floors and wood transitions, I think this just makes the house in keeping with the, uh, the modern style. You know, all the uh, stainless and everything. And it's going to look gorgeous when she's grouted up and finished. And a nice thing, too, is these bands on the side. Besides giving a nice uh, trim detail here, uh, 
you know, they're not a trip hazard at all. It's, it's impossible to trip on them. So we've accomplished what we wanted. We've transitioned between the two rooms. And I want to thank you for uh, watching. Anybody's uh, thinking about doing custom transition strips, it's not the hardest thing in the world. The trick is get a real good base to lay that down. If you can use the backer board, the hardy backer board, it's an even better service, uh, surface. But I got the exterior pl grade plywood and it's a small piece and it has a lot of strength to it. There's no flex. and. Uh, it's going to look fantastic and remember when you lay that mastic in don't uh, don't overdo okay because you need to have you don't want that all coming up between your uh, between your towel and then you've got uh, no place for the grout to go okay thank you so much for watching and I hope you look the enjoy the uh, look of the custom transition strip and comments and uh, thumbs up are always appreciated and thanks for watching.